Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And I pray that your weekend went well and your Monday and we're just so excited about what God is doing in this season. Over the past couple of weeks, we have been looking more at doing a series uh, during our time, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 12.30 to 1 o'clock p.m., uh, bringing you more content that I believe will help us in the now. And this week, we are looking at, uh, we're really looking at vision. And I want to have a discussion about what happens when the plan does not happen. So that's what we're going to talk about. I especially want to talk about uh, if we have a plan and are we sticking to it? So that's going to be the first part of today. Is there a plan and am I sticking to it? And I jotted down some notes, some things that I would like for us to go over in. And as I was preparing and all kind of things just began to hit my mind. So uh, some questions when we're looking at a plan and sticking to it. Sometimes, especially when we are dealing with things connected to a God-given purpose, we must know the difference between a impulse and faith. Because an impulse is something uh, that is not necessarily in the plans for the now. And a impulse is sometimes causing us to move ahead of God's plans. That's why we must know the difference between impulse and faith uh, when we are considering if we have a plan and if we are sticking to it. A part of having a plan, we must first of all know, is this bringing me into alignment with the will of God for my life? Is this a part of my purpose in life? Ask yourself some questions as to why Am I pursuing this purpose? Is it a hobby? Is it a interest that I've thought long and hard about? Why am I pursuing this? And I believe that everything should be planned out. Even if it's something that you want to purchase. have we saved for that is that going to cause a ripple or a uh some kind of interruption in my finances you know is is this a good time to do this but more on so when we are planning the visions when we are planning the dreams we must make sure that we have a good plan and that plan must have a good foundation meaning a good thought process uh, something that i wrote down and i thought about when we are planning things i believe and so i'm stepping on my own toes here i believe that if everything is not set up correctly foundationally 
it really there is a huge chance that it might not work out and the reason why I say that is because the things of God are complete and in order and in doing the things connected to the will of God for our lives then everything has to be lined up and in order we can't cut corners we can't cut and paste and expect God to increase it once again I'm stepping on my own toes because in my years of being in business being an entrepreneur I have cut corners I have done some impulsive things and it may have seemed right and good but it came back to bite me in the end so I am sharing something from experience and I'm learning day by day as I am in the next phase of my journey to really consult God to really have a a plan in place and to stick to it and what is helping me is making sure that I consult God that I include him in every area of my life making sure that I do not exclude him and so the the question of do you have a plan and are you sticking to it helps with the overall outcome and during the next few days we're going to talk about what happens when the plan does not happen when it does not turn out the way we planned it first of all is this a part of my purpose did I rush the process some things take longer to plan or is this something as I mentioned earlier impulsive that I thought of today and I think that I can just throw it together to do next week all depends on what it is but we must have a plan in place now here's something that I love to do because I never know when an opportunity is going to come for me to do an event or for me to receive an invitation for an event and I love to give I believe that when I do a, a seminar or a teaching or something like that, you should never leave my presence empty. Whether it's uh, literature or some kind of token gift. And since I don't like last minute, I am constantly putting things in place so that all I have to do is go to my inventory. That covers me from being impulsive. Uh, thinking it through what I would like to do and give. That helps me a lot. And I have to tell myself, because this takes discipline. I have to tell myself to stick to the plan especially when a thought hits my mind last minute and I'm crunching for time and I'm looking at finances I'm like nope maybe the next maybe the next go round, but not this time so I have discipline in telling myself no And I think a lot of times a plan does not happen because we don't have that type of discipline to have a plan and to stick to it. 
also praying and asking God about his plan. Lord, what are your instructions? What are your directions? Did we inquire and did we ask? Or did we just look at someone else's outcome and try to match that? And, I, and, and that's another component. Don't look at the outcome of someone else's event and attempt to copy it. Because that's their outcome. That's what they planned for. What are we planning for? Look at your last event. And I, I shared this before because, like I said, I'm learning so much more. And I wish, oh God, I really wish that I had this revelation years ago. Some things, thank God, they worked out just fine. <laughs> and thank God for individuals that were placed in my life strategic, strategically to help me plan well. And I often give credit to uh, that one being Jeanette Singletary. She helped me plan well for events. Uh, um, upon ending one event preparing for the next one we would go over what did not work well in the last event and we would work from that point but we had a plan of things that needed to be done and in what time manner so listen that taught me so much I absolutely oh god saved me a lot now my last event uh, which was in the end of July I was invited to speak to a women's ministry. Now, I was told about how many normally attend. But I prayed and the Holy Spirit asked me how many, told me, I should say, how many to prepare for. So I prepared for that number. I was able to go into inventory stock um plan I planned out the icebreaker activities I, I I planned because I knew the content so I planned out my message I planned out my icebreaker activity I did all of that in a plan and let me tell you the outcome was just as as I was instructed by the Holy Spirit that's the kind of planning I want. <laughs> and so I stuck to that plan. So that's why I want to implement prayer. And asking the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in our planning. And once again, we must know the difference between faith and impulse. Know the difference between, is this a part of your purpose? Knowing the timing and the execution of it. All of those things are vital and important. Consulting and asking. Sometimes our timing is off. Sometimes we can hear a word and, and get a vision for something. I've also learned to prepare spiritually. So that when the time comes, the manifestation of it comes, I, I've already prepared spiritually. My preparing spiritually is fasting, 
praying, writing out the notes. If it's if I see something in a dream or in a vision, I have learned to ask that I can do what I see in that dream or vision. For instance, standing before individuals in a large auditorium, uh, auditorium standing at the podium, and I am speaking. I want to know what I'm speaking about. So I ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me. What am I speaking about? What is the genre? And to help me prepare spiritually, which means fasting, praying, uh, studying the content. Having an idea of what I would like to present. Shaping all of those things up. And so that learning process has helped me along the way. I can say that there are some things that I have done. I can always talk about me and... Uh, don't that way no one gets upset with me for talking about them and this way I won't get any emails or <laughs> anything like that that says you're you're talking about me and okay so what I have done and I've made a lot of errors and I, I can tell you that I have is I can get an idea I did not consult God it seemed like a very good idea and I ran with it and it did not happen the way that I thought it should happen. And it goes back to my responsibility of not consulting God. I did not ask him. I really didn't have a plan. I just thought, oh, that's a good idea. Let me do it. And it did not happen. It did not work out. That's why I say we have to know the difference between an impulse and faith. Now, then again, it could be a faith move. It could be in the instance where God wants to know if you are really going to be obedient. If you are going to seek him and get instructions and move according to his instructions it that very well could be what's happening but unless we seek his face if humble ourselves seek his face and in all our getting let's get a understanding because what we see right now might not necessarily be for right now It could be for six months to a year from now. Yes, there are some things that are done immediately. Currently. And then some things are done for projected future. And unless I pray and ask, I won't know. And if I don't pray and ask and I keep moving blindly, I'm going to have a lot of disappointments. I'm going to have a lot of things that I have failed at. That is a part of our foundation. Faith is our foundation. Yes, we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, the Lord will bless the work of your hands. But make sure he is giving you the release to do that work. Make sure. And so I wrote down some more notes. I wrote out, if you are just starting out, make sure that you start with a plan that will 
include not just the successful anticipated outcome, but that your foundational bases are covered. We are instructed in the word of God to obey the laws of the land, right? Let me touch on this. Just because I am faith-based, just because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, He is my Savior. I have accepted Him in my heart. I confess Him with my mouth. Just because I speak in tongues as the Holy Spirit give me utterance, just because I am an elder of the fivefold, just because I am licensed and ordained, does not mean I get to disregard the law of the land. In other words, if you need the necessary license and credentials for what you're doing, don't use an excuse and say, oh, the Lord told me to do this. I ain't got to do all of that. No, because we serve a God of order. So, being a faith-based organization, being a Christian, a believer in Jesus Christ, does not negate, does not exclude anybody from having the necessary credentials that they need to do what they're doing. Because God works in complete foundation and order so don't say oh I, I i don't have to get that permit um because the lord told me to do this not so study to show yourself approved make full proof of your ministry set your house in order mm-hmm Oh, yeah. Get those things done. Get those done and get them in order. Once we know better, we should do better. And so when I was thinking about this this morning, I said, there is so much more to this than we realize. I have to make sure that I have clean hands and a pure heart when I say that I am executing the plans of God for my life. If I am saying, oh, the Lord led me to do this, I need to make sure that my things are intact and in order. That my foundation is solid. Because I don't want to operate out of the will of God. There is a right way to do things. There is a law of operation. Jesus said that he did not come to abolish the law but to fulfill it. He never said because I am the word, because I am the son of the living God, that I can do things just the way that I want to do them and I am excused. No, when it came time to pay taxes, guess what? He did. He instructed one of the disciples on where to go to get the funds to pay what, what was due. So if Jesus being the word, the only begotten son of God, the word that came down in the likeness of flesh, the one who was uh, resurrected from the dead and he ascended back into heaven to sit on the right hand of the father from whence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. If he obeyed and followed the law of the land, we're not exempt. We're not above him. And so it takes us into another level of, of kingdom minded thinking to say do I have my plan in order is it built on a solid foundation is my plan built on a solid foundation 
Did I consult God? Did God tell me to do this? Or am I doing this because, hey, I saw somebody else doing it. I thought it was a good idea. And I figured I would do it too. Well, that's their path. That's their journey. That's what God gave them. And we have to seek him to find out, is this what he is calling us to do? Is this a part of the plans that you have for me? And did I follow your plan? Or did I write out the plan and did I decide, oh, I can skip this. Oh, I don't need to do that. I can omit that. Well, guess what? We didn't follow all of God's plan. And therefore, that could be the very reason it didn't work out. I was reading in my time of studying and the Holy Spirit just shifted me uh, for this past Sunday of ministering. And the word was, I am a destiny pusher. And just reading up on the content from Moses. And when he, uh, after his experience at the burning bush, and he goes to his father-in-law and he tells him what he needs to do. And he takes his wife and his two sons and they begin to go uh on this journey there was a interruption because a part of God's plan a foundation he had not circumcised his sons and his wife stopped him did the procedure so that they can go on Because that was the law of God. And so during the next few days, I really, really want us to think about the execution of the vision. Ask yourself some questions. Am I following the plans of God? Did I consult God? What is the timing? I'm planning, but I need to know the timing. And am I sticking to the plan? Am I allowing others to come in and do their input? And I am allowing their input to supersede what God told me to do? Because... It worked well for them or they saw it at somewhere else or they read it. But is that a part of what God gave you? Do not allow anyone to come in and substitute their plans with what God told you. Don't move God's plans out of the way. Uh-uh. Do not move God's plans out of the way. Stick with God's plan. When we stick with God's plan, we will see His expected manifestation. Mm -hmm. And once again, if it's all about faith and obedience, learning how to be faithful, learning how to be obedient... As God sees that he can trust us to follow his instructions directly. Oh, that just got good in my spirit. Help me, Holy Ghost. As God sees that he can trust us with being faithful and obedient, he will give the increase. And I'm going to stop right there. Listen, we do have a class coming up November the 2nd for overview of the fivefold ministry overview of the ascension gifts if you are interested please feel free to email us here at the balance of life one at yahoo.com we will get you registered also if you are a christian author we are building our community for our online bookstore we love to have your content email us today blessings upon blessings